So just tell me a little about yourself and what you do. Well, I, I am a mark, I'm the marketing director at Texas Parks and Wildlife. And what that means is that I help promote outdoor recreation. I want people to get out into nature. I want them to go to state parks and go out hunting and fishing and bike riding and wildlife watching. And I also want them to have an increased awareness of conservation. For example, I want them to be aware of invasive species and I want them to know what they can do to stop the spread. So um, marketing, being a marketing director of Texas Parks and Wildlife is like doing God's work because we actually get to do all the, all the things that we really care about. So I've heard you have been working a lot on new plans against invasives. Could you tell me a little about those? Well, we're just, what we're, yes, we're working on continuing the campaign that we began in April 2010, and that is, we, you know, it's not a campaign where you can come out with a message for a few weeks and be done. It's, it has to be an ongoing effort because people forget what they need to do, and uh, you need to remind them continuously to clean their boat, trail, and gear. Because what happens with aquatic plants, which is what we're focused on, is they spread primarily, usually unknowingly. It's not like boaters and anglers are going out and wanting to purposely spread, you know, giant salvinia or zebra I mussels. Or, yeah, they're not looking to, to, to destroy their, their lakes. I mean, Texans love their lakes. They love their resources. But they just don't realize, one, that it's an issue or that, there's a, that they could be so damaging, and they don't know what to do to stop it. So that's why we call it a public awareness campaign. We're trying to make the public aware of what the issues are, how to identify the, the invasives, and, and what to do to stop spreading them. So um, it's an ongoing effort, and we continue to learn what works best so that we can, can use that media more than another type of media. And uh, we develop a lot of partners in the field, marinas and, and, and um, other, other you know, state parks, everyone that can help us get the message out. And yourself, you, I would consider you a partner. If you're going to help us get the message out mm -hmm. on, your, on your, is it a blog that you have? It's or is a, a website? blog okay. and a YouTube. And a YouTube. So you're going to help us get the message out. And this is what I call a low-cost option. We're not having to pay you anything. So that's, that's great. That's the, kind of, for fun. that's the kind of marketing we like, because we don't have a lot of dollars, so we have to make everything work hard for us. And this is actually a poster that uh, we, we printed up to send out to marinas and, and uh, to, to various parks and other outlets and uh, also to uh, boat dealers and things like that. And we wanted to get people's attention. You asked me a moment ago, are these real zebra mussels? Well, they are, but it's, it's, this is Photoshop. This is you know, a little bit of creative license because we wanted people to stop in their tracks and realize, wow, what, what is that? And, um, the, the, the truth of the matter is uh, zebra mussels, when they're in the larva state, are microscopic. You can't actually see them. And that's when they are probably the most dangerous because that's when people are most likely to transport them. Uh, if you had a boat that looked like this, you probably, hopefully, would know better than to take that boat in, to another lake. Probably pretty bad. Probably pretty bad. So the big issue is getting people to drain their live walls, clean their entire boat, use either don't go into a, another lake for at least a week and let it dry out so that the, because if there's no water, the, the zebra mussels can't stay alive after a certain period of time, or to use hot soapy water, like 140 degrees or more, high pressure, and clean their boat trailer and gear of any possible uh, now, zebra mussels. How do you eat that water? Well, I mean, if you go to a professional, many of the uh. professional car washes, you can, get, you, can, you can get the water at that temperature. It has to be a professional. Cleaning it. You know, some of the marinas actually have those that equipment as well. But um, you know, the the real the, the very difficult thing about zebra mussels. And here you see a little photo of it. Obviously, that's not real size. They're much. They're about the size of a dime. Um, is as I said, when they're in the egg, they can lay a million eggs. One one zebra mussel. So they again, like most invasives, they reproduce very prolifically. And, and even more challenging, they are, when they're in the egg form, they're microscopic, so you don't realize that you're carrying them with you. So if you go enjoy the lake one day, and you go out and have a lovely time, and then you hitch up your boat, and you go to the next lake within a period of time that hasn't let the zebra mussels dry out, you then can introduce that, the zebra mussel to a lake that's not infested. And once they're infested, we don't have really any good way to get rid of them. So they are really problematic. And you've been hearing a lot today in the, in the conference you've been attending here for the Texas Invasive Plant and Pest Council um, conference that, that there are, you know, all the different ways that people try to fight invasives, how expensive it is once it's established, millions and millions and millions of dollars. So we'd rather spend some money, a lot less money, you know, 
couple hundred thousand getting the message out than spending millions trying to stop it and just trying to even uh, control it because you're never going to get rid of it once it spreads. So public awareness is a really important part of our initiative to fight invasives. Now I bet that people, a lot of people are wondering, how do the zebra mussels get on the boat like that? Do they grow on it or do they connect? Or? Yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, the zebra mussels, for example, if a boat is left in a slip for a long time, the zebra mussels do attach. They love to attach to any hard surface. So props would be a, a you know, would be a, a key area where they would, that's down in the water where they would attach. However, when you, when you bring a zebra, when, you bring, when you're fishing or you bring equipment into your boat or into your live well, they can actually also be in the water, the, 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 the microscopic eggs. So they, they, the, the adults attach and the eggs can actually be carried, as I said, unknowingly. And grow on. And grow, yeah. Well, that's a lot of ways to get out there. Yeah, it's a lot of ways to get out there, and uh, and and once they're on there, they also in, in the case of the, in some states where it's it's on the beach or on the shore, it can cut your feet because it's those the sh the, the muscle shell the shells are very very um, sharp, and uh, when the muscles are, leave their shells and they're dead, they they completely not only pollute the beach but literally you can't walk on it without being being cut. So they have that that is another uh, another issue. issue yeah. And um, you know the, the other thing that they do is they, as I mentioned, I think in my presentation, they clog water pipes. Yes. So that is a really major concern. And cleaning out water pipes is municipal water pipes is uh, an incredibly expensive endeavor, and it ends up being passed along to people like yourself and your dad and me, because as taxpayers, ultimately, we have to pay for the burden. Yeah, the burden, because eventually it'll be passed on to us. So there are lots of reasons, environmentally, and economically. Economic. Econom economically, environmentally and economically, it shouldn't be, um, to, for us to try to control zebra mussels. So. Now, I have one last question. This is the only hard question. Okay, one hard question is allowed. Get a little worried. Okay. I just want to ask, do you have a favorite invasive or one that you hate the most? I'm guessing which one it is, but I, I want to see. Oh, I don't know that I can answer that question. Um, well, I don't have. A, I don't. I honestly don't have a favorite. I hate them all with equal passion. So, uh, yeah, I hate them all. Now, one that you vastly be one that's really causing a lot of trouble. <laughs> you really? Well, I'll just say the zebra mussel. That way, you'll be satisfied. Yeah. So I'll say the zebra mussel. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Very now good. Thank you. Thank you.